Hey Nick, I want to get back with you. That's a very good uh, point. It's glad to see that you're sitting around thinking about what comes next. Um, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, the Europeans saying, you know, well, we've got the red button. You know, what's what's what what's the when we push the red button, what happens? <clears throat> My fear, you know, understanding the monetary aristocracy, is the new world order. You know. The International Monetary Fund, which we're all going to support, is going to guarantee all the debts that's created out there, and we're going to work. Do we're going to get into a workout? Okay, you know we're all going to be the Greeks of behind the red button. Okay, and I say bullshit to that, Nick. Okay, sorry, but no. Now the, the the way I, I have always looked at this issue, Nick, is this: Who's working on the exit strategy? I always put that question out there. What's the exit strategy? And I don't mean the exit strategy that Bernanke, you know, gave us, where you know he's going to pay interest on on reserves, you know. Uh, no, the exit strategy from the debt money system, because I don't think we should. I don't think we can and I don't think we will replace once the whole thing comes crashing down this debt money system with another debt money system because that would be that definition of insanity you know to do the same thing and expect different results so we all got hoodwinked into the debt money system of fractional reserve banking when they passed the Federal Reserve Act in the United States of America in 1913. I know that it had been done, you know, before elsewhere, uh, but 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 we all, you know, got all hooked together with that in 1913. And after the crash in 29, when we failed to recognize that it was the nature of the debt money system that allows speculation by bankers. Uh, to overexpand the money supply and then to contract it, throwing us into the depression. Our inability to deal with that, that kind of locked us in right there. That kind of locked us in. We got, yeah, we got Glass-Steagall. We had, we had banking reforms that were passed throughout the world that were similar. Uh, we had a financial structure that was, you know, not safe nor sound, but relatively uh, more difficult, you know, to screw around with. But since Bretton Woods, you know, at the end of the war, since Bretton Woods and the creation of the I, that IMF, the World Bank, and all of that other stuff, you know, and after that through the treaties, you know, the general agreements on tariffs and trade, you know, all the various uh, trade treaties uh, in which, you know, the obligation of the, of, the, of the country joining or participating was that you have to have a debt money system based on fractional reserve banking, okay, or you can't play with us. So we've all been into it ever since then, Nick, okay? And uh, the jig is up. The jig is up. You know, we've, 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 we've come, we've come, we've come, we've come, we've, oh, oh, it's going up there. Oh, look at it, it's going up there. Nah, it's done. It's done. It's well past done is what it is, okay? But what we need is, you know, what we need to know and what we, what we would like to know, what I would like to see is that... <coughs> The jig is up task forces that work on the exit strategy from the debt money system. That's what I would like to see. Okay, that would make me feel confident because I know that the only way out of this system is by having a new monetary system. By having that that new monetary system. Now, how we transition to that new monetary system, you know, if 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 that's the question. Um, the first thing that has to happen is that nations have to recognize monetary sovereignty, okay? Their monetary sovereignty. And the nation's governments have to be responsible for all the debts and for all of the monetary policy, not only the monetary policy, but all of the machinations related to currency, related to the circulating medium of any country, has to be in control of the government. Um, <coughs> what does that mean? That means that the United States of America, the government of the United States of America, is going to be responsible for seeing that there is circulating medium. 
that there is money in the banks, then the banks can do what they want with it. But it's going to be the government's job to make sure that there is money there. Okay? It's pretty simple in that sense, Nick. Okay? Sometimes you got to, you know, erase uh, the curtain of a hundred years of history uh, in order to see it. But once you get down to the real issue of whether or not in a sovereign nation the government should be in charge of creating the money and ensuring an adequate money supply, because right now, you know, even you, you know, keep talking about, well, the governments can't just keep printing the money, you know, as if they were printing the money, you know. It's the fact that they're not printing the money that's the problem, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean the fact that we have a debt money system. All money has to come into existence as a debt. So we're into the contraction phase of a debt money system that expands and multiplies while the economy is growing and contracts and divides and takes money out of the system when there's no money. The permanent money system, Nick, remember that? Don't ever forget that, Nick. You know, don't ever forget that because that is that is the truism. You know that really ought to be guiding. You know whatever we do about developing sound money. Um, the Chicago Plan for Monetary Reform, you know, was written by the top economists of the day. You know, and that's why that's what uh, Robert Hempel was talking about when he when he talked about uh, you know the need for reform. Okay, so the government has to be responsible for ensuring an adequate medium of exchange in the economy. What does that mean? Well, that's really where the debate ought to be. You know, what is the adequate medium of exchange? Now you've got now all of a sudden what you have is the people recognizing, identifying, dealing with how much money there should be. So that's a fundamental, you know, socio-political, geopolitical question for every country. How much circulating media should they have? How much productivity does their natural resources and people uh, demand? And then provide it, okay? Because the purpose, you know, whether there should be or shouldn't be a purpose, but the purpose should be the same purposes that economists identify today. Maintaining general price stability. General price stability, not price stability, but general price stability. That's a lack of inflation and deflation, by the way. Both, that's what it means. And full employment. What do we mean by full employment? We mean that every person that lives in that country has a right to a job. How much can they pay? Well, that depends on all that other stuff. But it's the role of the government to ensure adequate circulating medium, Nick, adequate money. And if we had adequate money right now, people wouldn't be losing their homes. People wouldn't be losing their jobs. They wouldn't be losing their benefits. They wouldn't be losing their pensions because we don't have adequate circulating medium. Why don't we have adequate circulating medium, Nick? Because all the money is going. All the money that's being created. And we create hundreds of billions of dollars this year. Where's it going? It's going to pay off the debts. That's where it's going. And since all money is created as debt, we have to create more debts to pay off the debts. You see? The enigma, the conundrum? No, the fallacy of the debt money system. Got to do away with, extinguish, do away with it once and for all, the debt money system. And we can do it. And this will be the time to do it. Because the crash is on hold. Okay? The crash is on hold. You hit it. Mark to market accounting. Well, I better skip what I was just going to say. Um, double entry bookkeeping. Uh, how does double entry bookkeeping work by the Financial Accounting Standard Boards, Standards Board? Well, it works. It's worked one way on the way up when they ran up all that debt, okay, and then they changed the rules. They changed the rules to keep it from crashing down because it became crashing down, you know. We won't have any food right now, okay? You know why? Because they're not prepared to deal with it. So that's my answer, Nick. The jig is up task force. People ought to be working on it to transform debt money into debt-free money. That's what needs to happen. And if you do that, you can save the banking system and capitalism, by the way, which I'm in favor of.